very simple rendition of Old MacDonald's Farm. Now, believe it or not, it is possible to play that particular piece of music and any piece of music and make it sound much more exciting, much more interesting than that. Um, so what I'm going to do is teach you a few things that you can incorporate into that and most any other piece of music, even practice pieces and exercises and things, just to add what we call the human touch, add a bit of emotion into it. Okay, so this is a little bit of a little bit of a a, a walkthrough for you. Um, firstly, dynamic. We can definitely think about dynamic and uh, bringing some of that into it. Dynamic is uh, basically the loudness of a piece of music, but more's the point. It's in terms of how it rises and falls in different places, you know, how softly it might be played here and how loudly it might be here and how it gets there, the journey that it takes. Um, one of the most logical things that we assume is that if you are rising, you get louder and if you are descending, then you get quieter. It's not always the case, but if you think of a scale, for example, your logical instinct would be to get louder as you go up and then quieter as you come back down but that might not be the case but have a think of it in terms of um, in, in terms of your piece of playing because you can incorporate dynamics into things like Old McDonald's Farm if you want to you can start at that that kind of a gentle tempo and then start to rise and then pull back So we've just got a little bit of rise and fall. It's called swelling. They're called swells, and that's literally what it is. And the exact same thing you can incorporate when you're doing uh, your tempo. So obviously, if you think about it metronomically, you might have this kind of a, a pace set. So you'd be going. But if you want to push forward and pull back, you absolutely can do so. Now it's very important to realise that I'm not actually skimping on the pulse there at all. The pulse is still there and my pulse is still strong and it's still there's still a regular beat going through it. But all I'm doing is I'm just pushing it forward a little bit and then pulling it back. That's another example of swelling. So we've done it with the dynamic, we've done it with the tempo, and uh, that that is a really, really powerful thing that we can we can incorporate to add emotion into it because it's a similar idea to like how I'm talking to you now you know every word has syllables to it but you know sometimes I might pull back on a sentence and then I'll just push forward again you know I'm not speaking like this in a very set tempo it's not how it doesn't sound human and this is all about making our music sound human not machine like Incorporating the sustain pedal is one of the most commonplace techniques for incorporating um, any kind of emotion into something. So, for example, if I take uh, that, that exact same piece, so Old MacDonald's Farm, play it without, and then if I just find the sweet spots with. Now, what I've actually put on the score here is that for the E, I, E, I, O, I've got a crotchet and then a crotchet rest, a crotchet chord and then a crotchet rest. And if I put the pedal to that, that would fill in the gaps for me. And I don't want it to do that. That would go. It would effectively make the minims, like if I were just holding them on like that. Now, that's fine if that's the idea that I want to achieve. But think about it this way. Contrast is a very human thing as well. So consider that if I took the pedal out of it for that and let that sort of be exposed with a little bit of rest in the left hand as well, that would make it just that little bit more human. So what I'd end up with is... And it's just that tiny little bit of difference that makes it a bit more interesting and it's that interest that makes it a little bit more emotive. Another thing to consider is the phrasing. So obviously um, you've already got words to this particular piece of music, but if you don't have words, if you're thinking of an instrumental piece, it's always an idea to put your own lyrics to them. They don't have to make sense, uh, but 
just put words or lyrics to them so that you can really, uh, really understand the shape that you want that melody to take. Um, so in, in the case of this one here, you know, I've got... That's the first line of the phrase, okay? Uh, or that's the first phrase. So what I want to do is keep that together as a phrase. So if I was singing it, I'd be going, Old MacDonald had a farm. It would be all sort of almost slurred. So that we could consider as a slur. So rather than... We could instead be more... You see how different that is? Now, that means that the second phrase is E-I-E-I-O. And remember, we were talking about contrast. Well, rather than slur those ones together, I'm going to keep those ones a little bit more, a little bit more detached and put a bit of an accent on them as well, uh, just to give it a bit of dynamic lift as well. Um, that does mean that I can take a little bit of a breath as well, you know, metaphorically speaking, between Old MacDonald Had a Farm and E-I-E-I-O. So I don't have to necessarily on a farm as a full minim. I can go... Like that. So all in all... Like that. If you have the luxury of being able to practice your music and get it, you know, really work on it, uh, rather than just reading it on a whim and be expected to play it well first time. Um, it's well worth trying to work out some good fingers, uh, good fingering for it, uh, because sometimes they can that can really help uh, to, to bring it out of itself a little bit. It can really help you to um, phrase it better as well. So remember we were talking about bringing sort of th these three notes here, they're all the same notes though. So. To get those nice and together with one finger, is not necessarily the easiest thing to do. So what I can do is use three fingers and one at a time, maybe, maybe three, four, five, because that rolls off a little bit rather than use the same finger. It just makes it a bit more logical. And it also gives it this sort of natural tapering off as well, because obviously as I get that way out, my, my finger, fingers just get naturally weaker, uh, which is fine, but obviously it just means It just means there's a ever so slight change in the dynamic, in the velocity with which I'm hitting the note. Um, so that would that would be the last thing that I'd say to it. So what you can do is put it all together and incorporate those sort of things and turn this and a slow down there at the end as well so don't be afraid of deliberate tempo changes on top of your swelling as well because that really will lend something extra something nice to it as well <laughs>